Today Yugoslavia and Tito face their greatest threat. The madman in Moscow, Stalin, has gone to war with Yugoslavia right at the end of the Second World War. And we'll have to try and bail Tito out. I'm sure this man can do it. But maybe a little help. A little help never hurts. So on Iron Man with the Stalker focuses, let's check it out. Right, that's Red Bubbles. Not a huge army. Let's quickly take a look at templates. So this is fine. But I would recommend swapping logistics over for engineers, mostly because infantry doesn't really need logistics companies. Definitely not while you're still in Europe. Definitely not, so I would make that change. Okay, class, if we can all turn to page 246 in your textbooks. What? What was that? Oh, keep talking. The longer you talk, the longer I'll keep you all after class. Who the hell are you? What are you doing here? Professor Death Knight here with a lesson about Live Arena. <gasps> Sounds terrifying? Well, so's going to the dentist. You should still do it. Live Arena has a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> Teamwork! When you win matches, you'll get Live Arena crests towards unlocking special area bonuses, or so I hear. I'm too afraid to try any of this out. Wait, so, so you can ban champions now? How is that fair? I hate it. I wish everybody could play. This is just like when someone pointed at me and said, you can't even play and your bones look weird. But you know, rules are rules. So. so assuming you would fight, what would you do? Do not pick me for Live Arena. Seriously, don't. I'm too young to be Bone Meal. And again, thanks to today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Call of the Arbiter is in full swing now, and to celebrate this epic limited series, Raid is offering some of the new characters from the series as champions you can play in-game. The first one being Artak, the mighty orc warlord, who is going to be available to everyone for free. All you have to do is log in for seven days between now and July 24th, and bada-bing, bada-boom, you've got him. If you've seen episode one of Call of the Arbiter, you'll definitely want this guy, and if you haven't, well... Go check it out! And with all this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and you'll get a free starter pack with all this amazing loot. Again, just hit my link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. You got tanks too small, honestly. These are just too small. My recommendation is to add more medium tanks, more medium tanks, more medium tanks until you get to like 30 width. You still have 30 organization, which is fine. Something like this is what I would personally roll with. 30 combat with, a nice amount of tanks, good hardness, good breakthrough. These boys will smash. You've gone with mechanized as long as you can afford it. I guess that's fine. Maximum speed's not terrible. Uh, let's see it. You, yeah, the focus tree's done and you're just doing air production, which is fine. Speaking of air, it looks, oh yeah, numbers are good. Stockpiles are also good, so I'm gonna go ahead and say this now. I don't really know why you're losing. I'm going to assume it's because you simply underprepared. You don't really have the numbers you would probably need to pull this off. It's fine, it happens. Let me tell you what's going wrong here. You have armor that's too weak to really punch through. You're also trying to punch through across a major river into mountains. That's not gonna work, my friend. I um, would not recommend it. So we're, we're gonna stop the armor there. And you're trying to hold terrain. You really don't have to. Look, you're extending a lot of troops here in the north. They really have no business being there. I'll let you in on a little secret. This is all irrelevant. You can give up everything to the north of the Alps here because you simply don't have the men to hold it. What you're going to do, I'm going to do for you, is delete all of your front lines, focus everything, and I do mean everything, on holding the south here all the way to the border with Bulgaria, who's not involved, which is good. You don't need a longer front line. And then I'm gonna peel six-ish units away, six. Yeah, six units, and we're gonna set them to hold these two tiles. What's gonna happen is I'm literally gonna give up everything north of the Alps because it's irrelevant. I can get it back later. Right now, I have to protect my own land, all right? And that's what we're going to do. I'm thinking redeploy the armor, strengthen the armor, at least let them recover, get the extra equipment, in, and then we're gonna start cutting. Either wanna take out Romania first so I can get my hands on the oil, or I wanna take out Hungary so I can get back up to the 
this Riverline secure Vienna. We'll see, but the armor does does have other priorities now. As for doctrine, yeah, this is fine. Your navy is also doing well, I'd say. Let's get some navy doctrines in while we can. So naval stuff, good. I see you've stolen an Italian Navy, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, very good. Uh, one thing though, take your submarines and take them out of the main fleet. They're not good on strike force, they slow the fleet down. Just secure them away from the main fleet. We can use them later. They're usually not that great anyway, so eh. And I'm gonna split the main fleet into two, so two task forces doing strike force, and all of these destroyers are just on patrol, I guess. Is this patrol? Convoy escort. I'd put them on patrol, honestly, but yeah, convoy escort will do. Not great, not terrible. It is what it is. So in terms of air and navy, you're fine. You're more than fine. In terms of land, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna deploy these units as soon as we can. Force some more units out. We're gonna need a whole lot of troops for this. Manpower. Manpower is an issue, but we have political power to spend. And we're gonna go to all adult serve. It's, it's not great, but we're gonna have to do it. I'm also gonna go up to total mobilization and get women in the workforce to offset the balance. Let's see, how is war support doing? Not terrible. Could be better, could be worse. We'll leave that as is for now. I'm going to get a tank designer because we're going to make some changes to your tanks. And that's it for now. I'll probably replace this guy, your war support and communism guy, with the Prince of Terror just to get easier occupation. Speaking of occupation, you have very high compliance, which is great. Perfect. Except for some areas. So like Germany here, we're going to give up. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to put it back to no garrison. Everything's fine. So high compliance means you can stick with civilian oversight. It's fine. If we're going to take new stuff, I would recommend you switch over to liberated workers. It's just better. You did mention to me that you wanted to see if you can get Hugo, Hugo Slavia off. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work because I need to eat Bulgaria for that. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to let these armor units drive into that tile and then I'm going to redeploy the armor to clean up the area around Zagreb, push back up to the river and secure that area and we'll see from there. We're going to take a quick look at the tanks you're making. These are Great. I prefer improved medium cannons. I also like to put some radios on there. Easy maintenance is pretty much a no-brainer. Cheaper production cost, yay. And what else could we do here? Let's put a stabilizer on there for a little bit of extra breakthrough. Yeah, we'll leave it at this for now. Uh, I'll improve them a little bit once I get some more research in. So we have a lot of air, but I need to take factories away for now so I can assign them elsewhere. I also have a ton of artillery in stockpile, so I don't need to make as much. Same for your advanced anti-air. Okay, we're gonna need a lot of trains because the Soviets are gonna be bombing us and more tanks, I guess. And from that point onwards, it's gonna go back to air. These airplanes are good, I suppose. I don't usually use drop tanks, but eh, why not? I like to slap on a little bit of armor plating though. Yeah, okay, so this is, this is good. Uh, this is not really the disaster I thought it was gonna be, but Hey, not everyone is as confident as I am, I suppose. So these guys, you might want to actively redeploy, so manually pull back out of combat, so everybody's making their way downtown going fast. Okay, good, good. All right, these guys will get out, hurriedly redeploy. Oh, one more thing. Your main field marshal, I'm gonna give him logistics wizard and defensive doctrine. Infantry, not good for attacking. You have an armored core, I'm gonna use that to attack infantry defense. And on that note, everybody gets ambusher. Everybody who's not in an offensive army is just gonna get ambusher. It means I can hold a lot more easily. And I'm gonna need to hold a lot of land here. A couple of synthetics would be nice just because of oil and rubber. And then mills, straight up mills afterwards because we have a whole lot of work cut out for us. I can get oil once I knock out Romania, so that's not a main priority right now. Oh look, we found what's left of the Soviet Navy and it's destroyed. <laughs> we almost sank the Marat. Let's look at your officer course. So, flexible organization is not bad, speed's good. However, I'm thinking extra breakthrough is going to be better here. Professional officer core also good, but considering our manpower problem that we're currently facing, let's go with ideological loyalty for now. It's not gonna be huge, but it's gonna help. Hey you, yeah you, subscribe. You better subscribe. 
start mobilizing the motorized and armor, see what we can get done here. I need to alleviate pressure because we're taking a lot of hits that I'd rather not take. So we're trying to go and carve our way through here. Maybe get an encirclement, you know, encirclement's always great. I'm very happy to see that the armor is able to go wherever it wants to. That is good. That is massive. That is huge. With the air up as well, we are shooting down a whole lot more Soviet planes than we're losing. Massive amounts of ground attack. Yeah, I think if we can get a couple of good pockets in, we can do this. We can definitely, definitely do this. I just need to break through this tile now. Ooh, did they beat us? Apparently they beat us somehow. Need a small encirclement. Not even that much. It's a small encirclement. A little bit of encirclement. All right, we managed to close the pocket. Good. I'm going to use the armor and motorize to close it. And all of the infantry can redeploy to the main front line. We don't have that many units. We need to make use of them sparingly. I uh, don't want the infantry doing all that much heavy lifting. Good. All right. Rest of the front stable. I think we'll be fine uh, as soon as we can get the ball rolling. Yeah, that's a good pocket. That's a good amount of so <laughs> that's a good amount of Soviet divisions we managed to trap. Yeah, very happy with that. Just need to destroy that and bada bing bada boom. They're dead and we captured a railway gun, which is not huge, but it is welcome. And now we redeployed the armor. So the Alps are secure. They're not going to break through there. The rest of the line is also a lot more secure now that I'm sitting on the river. So they should be fine for now. I'm quickly going to turn my attention here, see if I can get a nice pocket in and push the Istanbul. And then I can park units on Istanbul. I don't have to worry about this front at all. So small steps, baby steps, but we're getting there. We're getting there. He's going to deploy units as often and as quickly as possible. So in terms of casualties, we have lost 400,000. I should have checked that at the start, but eh, I don't think we've lost that much. And we have killed 1.2 million Soviets. We're still outnumbered like five to one, maybe. Still, I have high hopes that we can make something happen here now. Also going to start research on better engineers. This might allow me to get flame tanks if I feel like it but it also gives me even more entrenchment. Entrenchment's keeping me alive. Also, I should have checked this. Nuclear bombs are not going to save you now. Yes, you have air superiority, but trust me, it's not what's going to save you. Uh, instead, I'm going to improve the armor on your tanks a little bit. Rockets, again... It's not going to be the thing that saves you, but it might allow us to get jet engines and jet engines are pretty cool. Yeah, okay, I'll allow it. I'll allow it for now. All right, 150 political power urgently going up to all adults serve. I'm thinking the members, the members deserve only the best. So I will be naming each and every one of these division after one of our channel members. If you want to see your name featured as a division, one of the glorious armor units, or maybe even an infantry foot slogger or a marine member, you can join join the channel, helps out the channel, helps out the content, and, you know, it's fun to see yourself win. Or maybe you'll see yourself encircled and destroyed. Hey, anything goes. The green bubbles give me confidence, the green air gives me confidence. Now we go and try and carve our way through Greece here. Where's the motorized? So once this motorized gets in position, I'm gonna smash through this tile, push towards Istanbul, and then mop up in the area. I think we can make some very nice kills here. Of course, assuming the Soviets don't funnel a billion divisions in, which they very well might. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Let's see if I can break through, think I can. All right, go on, go on. This is annoying. I I wish I had that river crossing thing, which apparently I don't. So right, let's try that again. All right, so we're through. No, we're not through. We're through now. Come on. Come on, we're through. All right, good. Split off and push towards Istanbul as quickly as possible. Always leave a couple of units behind to ensure you don't get in circles. Go, 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 go. All right, so we have Istanbul. I'm going to leave two motorized there for now. I'm going to move these four infantry divisions up. Now we smash these units into the sea. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We're doing it. We're doing it. So very good Soviet casualties in our first effective counterattack. Oh, Stalin. Never should have messed with Tito. Okay, that gives me good vibes. <laughs> that was a lot of divisions we just destroyed. All right, so that quick armor action solved a lot of problems for us. Now let's see what else we can do. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail what I'm going to do blow by blow, but I'll, I'll give you a highlights of my plan. I'm going to take a look at the supply system here and it tells me I need to push towards Timisoara to effectively make this entire southern section here a supply dead zone for the Soviets who have too many divisions stacked there. From there, I'm going to either try and knock out Hungary by pushing towards Budapest and 
Cluy, whatever this place is called. Or I'm gonna knock out Romania to get my hands on their oil and to set up on these mountains. So we'll see. But the key here is to follow the railways, take supply hubs to deny the Soviets and their allies supply, because that is the Achilles heel of the Soviet Union. They have a lot of divisions. That is their problem. If there's no supply for those many divisions, they will starve and we can easily push them. That is my plan, at least. All right, let's keep deploying units. I'm gonna quickly hop across here, actually, and take that tile before they can re- Yep! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take this tile before they can reinforce it simply because it's a whole lot easier to simply hold this tile than to later start pushing out over the straight crossing. So I have a foothold ready to take out Turkey later on. Just not yet. I don't have the men to hold that front if I go there. All right, we're gonna start cutting and hurting the Soviets then. I think once we can get the ball rolling here, I fully intend to make Stalin pay for trying to mess with Brosif Tito. I'm importing a lot of oil with convoys, so maybe we can ease off the oil imports for a bit? Yeah, let's try to seize the Romanian oil instead. Yeah, that gives me a lot of factories to work with now. <laughs> a lot of factories to work with. Yeah, I'm gonna try and seize the Romanian oil when I can. Another fun little tip here. See, this is our strike force, and it's currently all in port getting repairs because one of the chips is damaged. If you want to keep your fleets operational for as long as possible, make sure to take this box. Box. Automatic split off. If you en enable that, a damaged ship will separate itself from the main fleet and go and get repaired, while the rest of the fleet stays out in the field doing its mission. It's a lot safer than uh, having the entire fleet go back home every time a destroyer gets a dented hull. Right, my genius idea with the oil isn't working out. We need a lot more oil than I anticipated. Great. Why, why aren't people trading with me? Stop being annoying. Right, let's start the counterattack. The armor needs to move. Terrain isn't ideal, but we'll take what we can get. The armor should be able to punch through. Like, we're doing massive damage to all of their infantry, and they don't really have as much armor as I do to keep things uh, settled. And we push on to Timisoara, and that's the local supply hub. If we can take that, we're in the money. Yep, and that gives us access to the local local supply hub. Let's see if we can punch above our weight class a little more and keep going, keep going, keep going. We'll create an encirclement here if we can. Get the motorized going as well. Everybody all in. We're going for the big leagues here. Try and score a nice, a nice hit to Soviet morale and Soviet resources. Ah, damn. We failed to create the pocket because we're just too good. We're going to try and punch through towards Bucharest here. Like, you can see all of these Soviet and allied divisions are suffering massive supply problems because we took the supply hub in the region there is no other supply hub so that is great our own supply is also having a bit of a, a bad day so we need to make sure we keep the railways up to date we have a lot of work cut out for us in that field but overall I'm feeling fairly confident that we'll pull this off we might be able to push across the river but I doubt it it's very very well held ah. It's gonna be tight. Anyway, my plan is still the same. We'll, we'll see if we can get that going. If not, I'm gonna redeploy the armor to Turkey. I will take out Turkey first and go from there. That will give me a land bridge to places like Iraq, get their oil. Maybe Kurdistan has some oil. Maybe anybody wants to get me oil. We're a very welcome friend. Oil is a problem, or rather the lack of it. All right, so pinning attacks, full on assault on this province here. We should be able to get across. Yeah, I think I've maybe yeah, got my armor across. At least I should have. They can get their speed up. Oh, no. The problem's fuel. We're out of fuel. So we're very, very slow and they can reinforce. No. Oh. Ah, it doesn't matter. We, we managed to shove our units across. Let's keep going uh, as far as we can. Oil is a problem. So what I've done is I've grounded my destroyers. I, I've halted them. I've got my uh, strike force still out, so that doesn't cost me anything. Air force is still up, but it's only... I, I'm going to switch over to interception for the most part to conserve fuel for my fighters. And of course, the cast is still going to do all of the cast operations. That should conserve some fuel and maybe we can keep the armor rolling. It's the armor that will have to force the breakthrough here. Let's get some more infantry produced. We're getting manpower again. Say, so yeah, my son, you can hear in the background, maybe he's also very, very excited for all this good stuff happening. Okay, so we might be able to take Bucharest, but I'm... Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up. Just get there. I need a little bit of speed. Just a little bit of speed. Come on, come on, do it. Do it. Just do it. Yes! Okay, so I got 
pl Ployesti, which isn't much in itself, but it is a supply hub. That means even if the front grinds to a halt now, I will be able to get supply. Soviets are launching attack after attack after attack. I am holding them mostly because the defensive bonuses of the river are great. And well, they're also at the edge of their supply lines. As long as we can hold this, we'll be fine. Also, they're hammering into the uh, support in the, the fortification near Istanbul, which is fine. Doesn't matter. Oh, God. Yes. Well, that's bad. Um, that's actually very bad. Uh, can I open it back up? Okay, so <laughs> I was able to open that back up. No way, no way, no way. I lost... How did I lose a bunch of divisions just now? The encircle. Okay, my dear members, I uh, I regret to inform you that we we lost several of you. Yeah, I just lost fifty thousand men in the pl 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 ployesti pocket, mostly mechanized armor. <sighs> I lost armored and motorized divisions. Great. I'll see if I can train a couple more armor to take their place. See if I can. Oh. Yeah, I, at least I can make a pocket here, so it'll rue the day they crossed me there. Well, it beats not having anything to do, so at least this way I can uh, try to come up on Bucharest from multiple sides. Look, I'm not the world's greatest general, but if one thing doesn't work, try something else. So far, we're doing well. We have not lost all that many more divisions, or, well, lost a couple of more men, and we have definitely been bleeding the Soviets. So they're up to 3.6 million casualties, and all of their puppets are hurting. Once I knock out Romania, I'll have all the oil I need to keep moving, and then I'm gonna knock out Turkey. Great, everything's going well. I feel confident-ish. Okay, so the armor is actually moving now. We got fuel. Can it fight? Should be able to take Bucharest now. Multiple attack. Yes! Okay, so we take in Bucharest. How is that stupid little Romania doing? Uh, they'll die soon, so just one more victory point. At least we control their oil, and we're gonna liberate the workers here. That is like a really good occupation law if you're playing a Soviet or a communist nation. Liberated workers. You get resources, you get factories, less resistance. Pretty good. Armor can penetrate. Armor has... Penetrated one more tile there. Uh, let's get you guys into Galati. Come on. Come on. Yes. Okay. Yeah There goes Soviet Romania. Oh that really screws with the front lines. Okay, let's focus on cleaning this up here near Dobrich Dobrujda and we're not gonna be pushing elsewhere Mostly because I really don't think I can afford to it's gonna be a logistical nightmare But the Soviets are bleeding. They're losing men by the millions So that is a massive pocket will kill here. We got to make sure we can stabilize the line Railroad put troops into position as fast as possible because this is a very very long front line now It's certainly not looking pretty I am gonna try and knock out Hungary because this Hungary was created from Transylvania So the only victory points they have are Brasov and Cluj, Cluj, whatever. And this is technically occupied, so Budapest may be their capital, but it doesn't count as a victory for uh, victory point for them. So I only need to take Cluj, this thing here, and Brasov. So I'm gonna try and punch Hungary out with a, a good one-two. Oh boy, um, Soviets are really coming for me now. I definitely overextended. I, I think I dug too deep and too greedily, so I don't think I can hold this. What I'm gonna do is call... <laughs> do I wanna call these guys in? And it would be a lot of troops that can be de redeployed to the front. Uh, I can hold for now. I, I, at most, I'd lose a tile. An important tile, but it would just be a tile. Yeah, I think we're holding after that initial storm, so... Very long front line, not ideal, but... I'm also gonna stop trying to break through the Carpathian Mountains with tanks and motorized. That's just not a good idea. There's other places I can smash through with a lot less uh, difficulty, so... Well, we're breaking through Hungarian lines easily. Should be a nice little field trip to all of their victory points. We even overran the Soviet troops in there. Ah, uh, glorious. What do they have left? Nothing. They're about to capitulate, so the front line's gonna get a whole lot worse. Okay, let's take a deep breath and watch them disappear. <laughs> this front... This front man is disgusting. Oh, it's just disgusting. If I had troops in position, I could do so many funny and funky things here, but I just don't. Let's try some sort of attack. I don't know. Pinning attacks and redeploy the armor. Okay, go. Oh, this is gonna be so stupid. I don't know if it's gonna work. Probably won't. Big plan isn't gonna work. Uh, not nearly fast enough. I can still get something done if I go through here. If I can go through there, I can still take them out, I think. If I'm fast enough. Oh, my lines are so thin, it's getting absurd. Okay, so one pocket here. Let's clean that up real quick and keep the armor and motorized moving. So I want to 
have the armor try and break through here, do more damage. All right, another pocket here. Okay, so we've even got some pockets out of this. It's not the grand sweeping victory I, I would have liked, but it's better than nothing. So we're going to clean up the pockets. I'm going to redeploy my units. I think I'm going to drive up to the river here and then towards Vienna. Use the Alps to create another pocket if possible. And then I need to sit back, take a breath and reevaluate because this line is extremely overextended. Look at them go. There goes the vaunted red arm. Army. All gone. Stalin never should have picked a fight with Tito. Soviet casualties up to 5 million. Oh, love to see it. Soviet army is just too large to straight push. What you want to be doing all the time, really, is encirclements destroy parts of their army. And that way, the AI never really has the time to rebuild after you've done your damage. Because it takes a long time to deploy a fresh division. Relatively long time. Well, they can easily make more guns and pump out more manpower to fix their issues. It's a lot more difficult for the AI to just make fresh divisions. That does take time. Time they won't have to recover. One more tile and we'll have another juicy, juicy pocket. Come on, get in there, get in there. Come on, you can do it. I know you can. All right, so this entire section of the Soviet front is also encircled and we're gonna destroy that. Next, after that, I think I'll take a little breather in the European theater and we'll go and knock out Turkey. I'm really expecting Soviet casualties to just be absurd. Situation looking a lot better than when we started. I honestly, with the amount of equipment you had at the start, this wasn't a true unsalvageable mess. It just like takes a little fine tuning sometimes to fix your situation. In this case, just shorten the front line, redeploy your armor and rework your divisions into something a little bit more workable and you situation flips night and day like we see here. I have an idea. Instead of going for that Turkish front like I said at the start, what if we cut towards Germany? Because that would allow me to cut Czechoslovakia in half and that would cut off all of these Soviet divisions. Everything in Western Europe would be encircled. That is a prospect I revel. Balls to the wall, we're gonna go straight for it. Oh, this is a massive gamble. Oh, it's so worth it, yes! Okay, so this massive gamble actually paid off. I've cut the Soviet army in Western Europe off from, well, the Soviet Union, and now we kill them. This is gonna be the funniest victory I've scored in a while. Oh boy, uh, a lot of Soviets actually still, Soviet counterattack might hurt. Still, in the grand scheme of things, it shouldn't matter too much. But why is, like, half of my army leaving? Good gains, but at the cost of a severely deteriorating situation in Romania. I'll counterattack with the armor once we can. That should see southern Germany secured for our purposes. Now, no, that is the entire southern German front destroyed. Soviet armies took a massive beating there, I'd say. Six and a half million casualties already. And I think we've managed to stabilize the situation as far as we're concerned as well. So they, they did take a little bit of land back, but ultimately irrelevant. Once I can swing my armor back around, we'll be fine. Probably just knock out Czechoslovakia next and then go for a trip into Turkey. I, I need men though. I, I need divisions to cover the Turkish front to follow behind my tanks. Also, I'm going to drive to Bratislava and knock out Czechoslovakia real quick. Oh, I love how this armor can go wherever I want it to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna suck for them. That is definitely gonna suck for them. Speed, speed, more encirclements, more destruction. I can probably drive to Warsaw, but would my front line survive? <laughs> uh, yep, okay, so that is one more bulge reduced. So we're gonna destroy this pocket as well. And then I'm going to try and... I'm gonna kill this pocket. I'm gonna try and extend into Poland, maybe? I just need to make sure my line isn't as ridiculously long as it is right now. Oh, more armor, great. The members, again, I keep harping on about this, but honestly, you guys, you have made this channel amazing. Not just this run, uh, this channel. Part of the motivation to keep doing this is to see how much you guys love it. So again, thank you. That is another 20-ish Soviet divisions destroyed. Yep, and now we have the Carpathian front encircled as well. May not be the best idea in the world to have my tanks clean this up, considering it's all mountain, so the infantry is going to do cleanup here. The armor is just gonna hold the door open, and then uh, I'm gonna knock out the Turks. 
And now that we're ready to take on the Soviets full on, once the Turks fall, I'm going to start preparing collaboration governments on repeat. We are getting them out of here. We definitely need more war support though. Bombing's been horrible. Combat casualties has been... Everything has been going pretty bad in terms of war support, so we need to get that up urgently. <laughs> yeah, as expected, mutinies, great. We can hold some great patriotic speeches. Oh, I've captured more railway guns. Sweet, let's distribute them to the front. There's also a Soviet railway gun here stuck in Bratislava. I would assume we've captured it by now, but ah, the AI is fickle. Well, once Turkey's out of the equation, uh, I think we'll have the Soviets on the ropes. They don't really have anything remotely capable of stopping me with the Turks out of the way. So most of their puppets or allies are virtually worthless. Although the Finns and Norwegians have cool flags. They still have numerical superiority at a lot of factories. But look, they've taken 8 million casualties. I've barely taken a million, not even a million. I think I can start pushing soon. Also, why are they... You got a bunch of war goals, but they're only fighting me. And there go the Turks. Great. I also see a very suspicious gap in the Soviet lines down south here. So there's nothing here. If I can get my units there quickly enough, I can start cutting some more. Long story short, this is probably over and it's just a cleanup operation unless the AI suddenly decides to pull things out of its rear end, which I doubt. Uh, we are actually going to get Yugoslavia. I'm going to annex everything and before the Soviets capitulate, I will... Well, I'll say hello to Georgi Dimitrov here. There is only room for one communist country in the Balkans. And it's run by Tito. The German Republic has joined my faction. Why? Ah! <laughs> well, that'll do it. Uh, Soviets have declared war on the German Republic. I think the German Republic can stand on its own two feet. They got 129 divisions. They got a decent fleet. Oh, decent. They got some ships. They got a decent industry. I, I think the German Republic can do this all on its own. And with that massive distraction the Soviets have created for themselves, I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to see if I can have a bit of a field day with the armor and the motorized. Have a little fun here. Meanwhile, uh, as far as the Caucasus are concerned, this is pretty much under control. I've managed to sneak my way into some positions of control. I've got my hands on the local supply hub of Tbilisi. So he should be fine. He's gonna sit on this for a while. And first pocket. Yay. Well, first not. Not, not the first pocket, but another pocket. Yay. So that's a good amount of Soviets stuck near Odessa. Let's clean that up. Caucasus front is fine. And the, the important thing here is my collaboration governments. They are underway. So it's gonna take a while, but at least we'll get something out of it. I'm very fortunate to take this little casualty simply because I am using the armor to do almost all of my attacking. Attacking is what costs you manpower. And if you use armored units for it, or at least units with very high soft attack that make the battles last short amounts of time, you end up with results like this. 900,000 losses. Terrible, yes. But I've killed 8.3 million men. And there's a lot more where that came from. Look at this pocket. <laughs> 8.4 million men. I think I'll drive the armor up there and we'll smash Poland. No medical on the Vistula here. No, the Soviet Union will not save Poland, ironically. Poland's gone. Poland's gonna die. That'll make me have a very large front line with the Soviets, but they're pretty much dead as it is. So I'm not really concerned here. Soviet Union's dead on their feet with 8.4 million casualties and they're down to what? 250-ish units. This is obviously overestimating their divisions. And there goes Poland. Hurrah! And the armor's got another pretty big encirclement in. Oh, two smaller encirclements. Right, let's push back, clean up the Gdansk pocket, and then we can reevaluate, see what we'll do from there. I'm mostly here to ruin the Soviets' day at this point. And ruin their day I shall. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the Germans are going to be my friend in this, uh, might as well give them control of some of the states here. Can I return some land to them? No, I can only release some sort of Soviet version, communist version of Germany. So well, I guess I'll be keeping that land then. Right, I need to make my armor meet in the middle. I'm not even micromanaging this all that much. Just tell my tanks and trucks where to drive. And with the air power <laughs> and just the quality of my troops, they should make it happen as... Yeah, as as evidenced 
by this casual drive through the entire Soviet line where we will destroy another section of their army. I almost feel bad for them. Almost. If I kick the Bulgarians from this faction and I justify... Oh, I forgot I can't justify a war goal because I don't have the political power. That's so annoying. Oh, well. At least this will make me feel good about myself. So 8.9 million casualties already. I want to see what happens when all of these disappear. Bada bing, bada boom. That's the entire... <laughs> Entire center or southern section of the Soviet lines gone. 9.3 million casualties. Yikes. Oh boy, I think we have numerical superiority here. It's gonna come down to draw line, make units go there where I want them to, so... And we shall now liberate the workers of the Soviet Union. Telling my tanks to drive to Riga, try to cut off the entire northern section of the Soviet line. Looks like... <laughs> They're encirclement. <laughs> Time for my armor to do funny things again. These are just stupid. AI has just become completely incapable of dealing with my armor or with my army, let's say. Anything I do, I can do with impunity. The Soviets just, they've run out of steam. Just look at these stupid snakes. Yeah, that is the entire Baltic section of the Soviet front and circle. Let's, uh, let's go there. Drive them back. Oh, uh, and even without supply, the Soviets at this point are just too weak to push my units. And with that, we've deleted the Soviet Baltic Front. You know, I had the Soviets on the rope. I could have sworn I had more units than them at some point. And despite their almost 12 million casualties, they're back up to 300 divisions. <laughs> they just keep crapping out troops. Well, at least they were still able to casually drive into Leningrad, so they're not that tough. Well, it looks like we're gonna go and gobble up Bulgaria anyway. They don't have any friends. I don't need any of my allies. Just gonna see if I can do it with the armor. If the armor is insufficient, I can always call on others, but no, the armor is definitely going to be sufficient to take this on. Alas, Bulgaria, no friends for you. No friends, no hope. Well, with Bulgaria out of the way, that was a quick and decisive action. Let's turn back to the Soviet Union. It's 1947, I just want this to be over with. Um, and... Where are all their troops coming from, I wonder? And just like that, we've cut off the Soviet Baltic Front. Let's drive on down to Baku, take away their oil, and I'll just set up a nice de defensive perimeter with the... What is this, Iranians? Yeah, I'm just gonna start driving, honestly. I'm, I'm tired of this. I, I just want it to be over by now. It, yeah, that should do it. A lot of red bubbles still. I'm gonna take massive casualties, but I have manpower to burn. I'm still mobilizing more. Soviets are at 13 million casualties. They are collapsing left, right, and center. I just want this to be over with. Soviets have taken 50. <laughs> 15 million casualties. They still have a bunch of divisions, but come on. 50 days for my next collaboration government. All right, I'm gonna drive my tanks to Moscow and that will be probably it, I think. Oh, oh, big lag spike. That was it, the collaboration government did it. The Soviet Union has capitulated. And there goes the peace de- Oh, dear God, what did I do? We did get Yugoslavia, which requires us to annex all of our neighbors. So I, I think we've done that. Created a couple of nice puppets in the deal. Let's, let's clean, clean up the borders a little bit. So with Yugoslavia under our belt, um, I'm, I'm gonna make the map a little more disgusting and then we'll call it a day. We took all that land. We've set them all free on their communist paths and the Greater Balkan Workers' Congress dominates Europe. Well, most of Europe, anyway. All in all, this was not the world's most difficult disaster save, but it was an interesting scenario. It just goes to show that with a few little tweaks, you can change a whole lot of things. Shorten your lines, redeploy your units to where they matter, and don't make hopeless offensives across rivers. Also, we still got the achievement, so there we go. <laughs> We're done. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys will enjoy the next one as well. See ya.